and it won't mean anything to you, it will be gone, like a bubble. That's the problem that we face with mere emotionalism, it's not permanent, it's like the Chinook that comes and goes. What we need is a real stirring in our minds and our wills and our affections, then we've got something that will last. Lastly, this morning, I want to look at what I've called some moral obstacles in the pathway to God's blessing. And number one is hidden sin. Hidden sin. Do you remember in the Old Testament, the book of Joshua, the people of Israel had a tremendous victory over Jericho. The next little town was called Ai. And it was so small in proportion to Jericho that the leaders of the Israelite army said to Joshua, just give us a few thousand soldiers and we'll go and we'll clean up Ai very quickly. So they set out for Ai. You know what happened? They were defeated. They suffered a real crushing defeat at the hands of the people of Ai. And they came back with their legs between their tails, metaphorically speaking, and they said to Joshua, we were defeated. We were defeated. And then God, step by step, what did God do? He showed them that there was sin in the camp. One Israelite had disobeyed God and hidden the evidence in the sand of his tent. God said there's sin in the camp. And until that sin is dealt with, your people will not know victory. When I read that story, when I go over that story, there's one question that comes to me. And it's the question, Lord, is it I? Am I the obstacle to your blessing <laughs> because of that which is grieving the Holy Spirit? Will you say that this morning in your heart? Lord, is it I? Am I the blockage? Am I stopping your blessing coming upon your people? Hypocrisy is a real stumbling block in the pathway of God's people as they seek revival. I believe there are those who are turned off from seeking revival blessing because of the inconsistency of some of us who profess so much, but know experientially so little of what these spiritual realities are in our lives. We do well to pray, Lord, make me more consistent more sincere, more true. Forgive me now for limiting what thou in me wouldst do. Because God wants to make what we profess and what we experience to be the same. Fear is another stumbling block in the path of those who want to walk on the road to revival. Just fear, fear of what it's going to involve, fear of the unknown, fear of meeting God in this deeper dimension. And so we hold back, we stumble on the stone of fear. Let me read from Dr. Howard Guinness, writing some years ago concerning the Keswick Convention in England. He says, deep repentance is a very costly thing and we shy at it. At Keswick Convention, missionaries from the foreign field in describing some of the revivals they had witnessed and in which they had taken a part said with almost monotonous regularity that these had started when people commenced to confess their sins publicly and then put things really right with their neighbors as well as with God. What? Publicly? In this country, England, and we could say perhaps Canada, in this country, if such a thing were to start in some of our orthodox circles, the meeting would be hastily closed down and it would be said that the devil had got into the meeting. Some of us are enslaved by fear at this very moment. 